Hello viewers, here is a TPI F18TE high velocity VN. This is an 18 inch model and it is from recently, it's, it's from 91 uh, 133C. Oh wow, we're at the Crips. I thought there was a date code on here that was in regular. Yeah, here we go. Uh, January, May of 2019 is when this one was made. And um, it does have the all ports still. And this one runs just fine. I've been wanting to do a teardown video on this thing to take a look inside the motor and see how the construction is inside of it. On the surface, I'm very, very happy with the unit. I haven't owned it for long enough to say how, how it's going to hold up over time, but as far as the performance and the build quality is concerned, top notch. It reminds me very much of the old patent fans from the 90s for instance like the U220 I saw a video on the one of these recently I forget the name of the producer it's one of the newer channels and the unit experienced a failure it, w it was really really strange it looked like the capacitor had come dismounted and got caught up in the blades which is odd we may never know what happened with that fan, but I want to take this one apart and see maybe if I can speculate what could have happened. I'm looking at the capacitor mount right now, and I mean it's not really anywhere near the blades. I probably got at least an inch of clearance, and I don't see how anything could have gotten caught. Whoops. You know, I mean, it's it's a fair bit below the blades, so I don't I don't immediately have an idea of what could have happened. So I don't know; it could be a mystery. Anyway, so let's take this thing apart, and see how easily it is apart for cleaning and servicing. I want to put a couple drops of oil in here, anyways, because um, the spin down time seems to be a tad less than I think it should be. So to begin, we have on either side of the guard, we have two screws, which I think is unnecessary. They are at least regular size Phillips head screws, and they have a bolt on the back that they screw into. So it's at least done correctly, although I, I think it's an unnecessary step to have to go through to open the thing up. Turning, I gotta grab the bolt on the other side. Okay, that's one of them off. Well, that's not too good. This is what it looks like. It's got one of them locking things on the front of the screw. Not sure if I'm going to put those back in or not. Maybe if I'm feeling particularly ambitious, I will, but they really don't suit the purpose that I can tell. They're a little bit difficult to get out of here. Okay, with those pesky screws out of the picture, I think we'll just be able to open all these clips. And unlike on the 24 inch model, these open beautifully. Very easily. And this comes right off. So for basic cleaning, and, and these grills they don't really need to be washed because you just take a cloth and it comes right off. These grills are very easy to clean. As far as basic cleaning is concerned, this thing is, is fine. I mean, because you get to everything on the inside of here. The motor, there's nothing to clean on the motor because it's an enclosed motor, so 
you know, on the back you just wipe everything down and inside you wipe it down and it's good to go. And oil ports, you got oil ports on there so you don't have to really do any any disassembling for maintenance beyond what we just did. So as far as cleaning and servicing is concerned, it's pretty good. And now I said the spin down time wasn't quite what I thought it should be. Now it's making a fool out of me because it seems to be much more free than I remember. Alright, so let's take a look inside the motor because I want to see what it looks like. So we have um, we have a square top uh, screw here. Which is extraordinarily tight. Okay. That was tighter than I think it should be. But it came off and it did slide right off the shaft very easily. It's a nice blade. Very well, very well made. It's three rivets per blade. You know, this is a strong, I think it's aluminium because it's very lightweight, but it's very sturdy. Now, this isn't going to be bending easily at all. You know, these boys, they don't, they really don't flex at all. And so, um, in the particular case that I mentioned earlier where the the capacitor situation transpired. I don't think the blade is damaged on that fan. I, I don't think this capacitor is is heavy enough to do any kind of damage to this blade. This blade is in fact very sharp. I'm surprised it didn't cut through the capacitor. So that's the blade is off. Let me set that down carefully so it don't bend. Because it is in very good balance. And so now we have the motor. Um, spins very nicely. So we have four bolts here that are holding the motor on. And then we have uh, it looks like the control panel is just uh, welded to the frame and then the, the strain relief would come off but that's going to be a nuisance so I'm not going to take that off. And then the switch I believe probably has a nut on the other side of the knob which would release it yep it's got a well it's got a screw and then a little plastic piece so that should come off relatively easily so let's take a look inside the motor I believe the way this is going to work is these nuts here will take it release it from the housing and then there's a second nut behind there which will split it open. Let's see if I have the right size nut here. Wrench. No, that's a 3 8 and that's too big. Alright, I'll have to use the adjustable because I don't have uh, the right size here at the bench. I have that size somewhere but I'm not going to get it out when I have this. It'll work just fine. These aren't very tight at all. Yeah, they're tight enough to stay in place, but they're not difficult. Okay. These are the bolts with that little plastic thing on the front that keeps it from threading too freely. Come on camera, focus. There we go. And on the other side it's just a regular bolt. Okay, so we have that bolt and we have a washer. A very simple way to connect it to the, to the frame.
Okay, I'm going to tilt it forwards now so that the motor doesn't fall off when I undo this bolt. It still looks like it's going to go backwards, but it won't be too bad. Okay. So the motor should now come out. And it did. It came out very easily. The problem is it didn't give me a lot of slack to work with at all. So I'm going to have to undo the switch. There's a screw up here that I will undo. Let's see what else has to be done. That was certainly easy enough. Okay. And now there is a uh, there's a tie wrap here which is holding the wires in place. So that further makes me wonder how this capacitor came off on that particular one in the video. Because we have this here which really would prevent any of these wires from coming out and getting into the way of the blades. So really don't know and this I mean it's not super strong but I don't see it breaking on its own accord I, I think something would have to you know something would have to really get into this and even the vibration which these fans don't really vibrate that much even the vibration I don't think would break this somehow the wire must have gotten caught or whatever I don't know that's weird it's a very strange failure there's nothing here that seems like it would be obvious an obvious failure mode at all so very strange very very strange I'm going to I'm going to have to cut this for, for the video and I'll put a new one back on I need the slack to work with here alright so should I take the strain relief off? That's going to be a pain in the neck. I know it is. But I think it's going to have to happen. In a perfect world, I would have removed the strain relief and the switch prior to unscrewing the motor. But since I'm not operating in a perfect atmosphere, I'm just going to do this. Just so it doesn't fall. Okay, so we have a grounding screw, which is a common, or a nut top. It's too big. It's a standard size. And that grabs this, this grounding wire from the motor and this grounding wire from the cord. So it is pretty thoroughly grounded. And now deal with this. Um, I think the easiest way is to is to push it to push it through that way. And I'll we'll try to use a small common screwdriver to do that. <laughs> Taking these things off is really a nuisance. It always is. This one's pretty tight on there. Maybe a bigger screwdriver is going to be more useful. I have to put a lot of force on this thing to get it through here.
starting to go. Okay. That's off. Now I can pull this through enough to set the motor down on the table and work on it from a better angle. At this point, the fan is fully disassembled. That really wasn't too bad. Nothing there was particularly obnoxious or annoying. The strain relief was the worst part, and even that came off pretty easily. Oops. It's a lot lighter now without the motor. Okay, so here's the motor, and it's huge. I mean, this is this is twice the thickness of like an old McMillan motor. It's a huge motor. Now it's about the size of, of what what Patton used to use. Uh, I mean, twice the thickness of like a box feed motor or something. So it's got all these Funny Man stickers on here. I think I'm going to take those off because. It looks ridiculous. Now it's going to leave a sticky residue. If it's going to leave a sticky residue, then maybe I'll just leave it alone. Now yeah, it'll come off okay. I'll take these off and I'll just put these inside the box. For whatever crazy reason. Let's see, I'll leave the informations one, which is this one. Uh, this can go because I know that it shouldn't be exposed to rain. Common sense tells me it shouldn't be exposed to rain. Although, unfortunately, common sense has become a thing of the past, and people don't think anymore, they just do. And doing without thinking is very, very dangerous. more information so that can stay. All four of these funny man ones on the back have got to go. Suitable for commercial or industrial use only. Yeah, I'm using it in a house so too bad on that. I don't know why it's only suitable for commercial or industrial use only. Not residential use. This one is not in the English. It's in maybe the French or something. This caution hot. Yeah, I know the motor gets hot. Well aware of that. And now we have one left. Some goof or goof on, I think it's whatever the better one is. Not here to clean this up. But uh, that looks much better now. I don't know, I'll clean it up after we do the servicing. Alright, so to open this up, we have these four bolts, and I think that'll remove it. Let's see it. These may be a metric because this doesn't fit quite right, but if these are loose enough that it'll work. This is a 3 eighths. These are a very reasonable tightness as well.
those together the same way the old uh, McMillan motors did too. Okay, so now let's see how easily will it come apart. No, oh, very easily. And uh, there's the rear bearing, and the stator is kind of connected to the front housing, so I'm going to slip this through the back if I can. Okay, it looks like it'll slide out. Okay. Well, this is a nice motor. Uh, I was not expecting it to look quite like this. This is really nice. It's got the cooling fins in there. Keep the winding school. And it's got plenty of uh, wicking material in there to, to keep the bearing wet for the oil. And there does, in fact, appear to be a visible amount of oil in there. Jeez, this is a really nice PSC motor. It looks like it was was made very well. The the windings are a thick, thick gauge. That's not uh, typical 18 gauge wire. I mean, 18 gauge. That's not what's usually in here. It's a little bit thicker gauge, so it runs cooler. Uh, yeah, that's a nice, nice motor. And you can see there's plenty of varnish on everything. It's it's very. Uh, Everything is held together. There's no loose wires. Nothing's loose in there at all. That's solid. I have zero complaints about that. And in fact, that right there, I believe, is a, a thermal switch, not a thermal fuse. So if this overheats, it'll come back on. That motor gets a 10 out of 10. That's a nice motor really nice. I don't see any defects in construction at all. And the front bearing is completely wet with oil as well. And the, the wick is soaked also. <coughs> so nice. Very pleased. That's, that's a 10 out of 10 as far as I'm concerned. And here's the shaft which you can see does have oil on it. Both sides, it's got some pretty serious thrust washers on there. And it's a nice it's a nice uh, rotor as well. I don't see really any defects in here to speak of. It looks very very consistent. So um, yeah, I I'm thrilled with this. This is a 10 out of 10 motor. Very, very nice very nice and I will just for good measure throw a drop of oil in there when I put it back together but uh, upon a closer investigation I don't think it really needs it Now we have to make sure the alignment is correct. Both oil ports should be up at the top. And the screw holes have to align. I'll put a couple of drops of oil on the rear bearing. I got some kind of snarky commentary about doing this a while back, but I believe this is the correct thing to do, so we're going to do it. wicks are full so I'm not going to add any more oil to them because they don't need it. I'm going to throw one of these through here just to make sure it's in alignment. And it's not quite. There it goes. Ok. 
Okay. I'll put one on the other side too, just to make sure it's secure. In the correct alignment. And snap it shut. And there we go. Very, very pleased with what's inside that motor. That is a 10 out of 10 motor right there. Couldn't ask for anything better. Could not ask for anything better. Alright, let's close this back up. these bolts back on here. They seem to be the same on both sides so it don't matter which way they go on. Now the next on my list of things to take apart and investigate inside is the Air Queen High Velocity Fan. I may very well do that today because this has piqued my curiosity. I wonder... I mean those motors look really nice from the outside so I really wonder what's on the inside of them. Okay, we'll tighten this back up to the tightness that it was before, which is not very much. Oh, I could use this. Just, uh, Okay, that's that. Um, everything's got a little bit of oil on it now, which I hate when things get slick with oil, but we can clean that up, no problem. I gotta clean the back of the motor anyways to get the sticky residue off. It's pretty stiff right now, which is to be expected. Go free to right up. Perfect. Okay. Now let's get it back in place. I'll zoom this out so we're not missing the video.
these weren't very tight either so I'll just return them to the same tightness that they were before Looks like one wire came out of the switch. No, that's the ground wire. Okay. Nope, nothing came out. Alright. Now let's put the wire back through so we can get the strain relief on again. I don't particularly like these things. They've been used on fans for decades and decades, but I just don't like them. I've been used on a lot of other products too. These are pretty common. Okay, so I just put it back on and we'll just press it in. It's going to be a very tight fit. Well, we're going to take some convincing to get it in there. It may be just as difficult to get it in as it was to get it out, if not worse. Actually, that wasn't too bad. Okay. Now the switch. It should go just like that, I think. on correctly then uh, this should line up with the numbers it's like there was some hot glue in there at some point okay that seems to be correct yeah I just noticed something about this via this has a different logo on it a Lamont pointed this out I didn't even pick up on that this has a different logo than the 12 inch one that I have. I guess this is the newer logo? I don't know. It's kind of cool. Okay. So now let's put that grounding wire back on. yellow wire should be in front. In front of the green wire. Maybe it'll help keep it in place. I'm a little bit weary of this control set now because of what I saw on that other video. I really don't see how that happened. I, you know, I'm looking at everything in here and it seems to be just fine with the way it's, it's held in place. I really don't know what happened to that other fan. that I'll keep everything there. And then there was a tie wrap over here that was holding that on. I'll put that back because that makes sense to have it there. Just put it on just like that.
So I'll just keep everything there in place. You know, and there's no way that this is any of this is going to come loose. It's there's just it's it's not going to happen. So maybe I'll put one more over here just in case. I mean, I, I'm nervous now because of that other fan's failure, but I don't really see how it would have happened. You know, if we tuck these wires under kind of underneath where the guard comes out. I mean, they're in there secure. They're not going anywhere. I don't foresee those coming out. I, I just don't. You know, a lot of times you can look at stuff and figure out what went wrong. And then a lot of times you just have no idea. And this is going to be one of those cases where I think we're never going to know what happened with that other fiend. So, I don't know. I'm confident in this. Nothing looks off here. It seems to be just fine. So, I don't know. Let's get all this cleaned up here. And now uh, I'm going to oil it. Oh, oh the, the bearings through the oil ports just for the sake of doing it because they're there. Uh, very easy to do that. That would be like the routine servicing that I would go through on this on a regular basis if this was under heavy use. Of course, I would take the oil for fiends, which would be the blue can, 3-in-1, or the, um, the zoom spouts, which is for electric motors. And we'll just put a drop, only one drop in this case because it's already oiled. I'll put a drop in here. Normally I would say 4 or 5 drops is good, 3 or 5 maybe. Just let that oil go in there. It should draw it in. There it goes. Uh, so that's that. So with the dripping, wipe off the excess. And that should seep into those wicks in there over time. And then the same deal on the back. Uh, we have the port here. It's a very, very small opening, but it is there. I'm going to go fetch some goo gone, or goof off, or whatever it is, to uh, take care of the sticky residue that's on here. Goo gone. This is the cleaner that I wanted to use. And when I bought this, I was kind of upset because it was relatively expensive. I says, whoa, jeez, what a small bottle. And, I mean, it's, it's been fine because I've used this for so many projects, and it hasn't even gone down at all. Okay, so we'll just clean over where the stickiness is, and it works great. It takes all the sticky residue right off. I'm going to swipe this down with some water to finish off because I don't like having cleaners sitting on things. It doesn't seem like a good idea to me. putting it back together, put the blade on, put the guard on, and we'll be done. Certainly went a lot better than that window fan did. Although I think I'm going to put this video up first, because it's more relevant right now. Which you'll see in a couple of days, what I'm talking about. Okay. You have to spin him freely and be ready to put the blade back on. It is key, there's a flat part of the shaft, so you know where the, where the uh, set screw goes. And it's right about there. Now I have 
this tool, which happens to be the right size. <laughs> Remember the last time I've used this, I'm going to reverse it. Uh, made in the USA, it's a great tool. Okay. I'm going to put this back on pretty tight because it was tight originally and I'm sure there's a reason for that. Okay. Yeah, the spin down time is better now I think. So I think we're just about done here. Let's get the guard out. Put the guard back on. Yeah, the spin down time definitely improved after that. Shoot. I wonder if it wasn't fully aligned correctly. Guard goes back on super easy. Bolt holes are lined up pretty much perfectly. I'm not too fond of this, but I guess I'll put it back on. I just think it's totally unnecessary. And they're hilariously small, too. It's not even like they really do much. They're going back on easily, so I'll keep them, but if they weren't going on easily, I probably wouldn't bother with them. Yep, they spoke too soon. soft metal. Not good. Alright, so that's it. It's all back together. Let's just make sure it runs. I'm sure it does, but you never know. Stranger things can happen. So this is rated for how many amps? Uh, it's rated for 1.7 amps or 2.2 amps. I don't understand why there's a discrepancy, but it's I allowed it up to 1.1 amps uh, at a surface factor of 1. So, let's see how much power it draws. Let's start off on the low. Where's the knob? There it is. It's in perfect balance. Absolutely perfect. That's at 1.5 amps.
So unlike the 14, or just the 14, unlike the 24, this blade is putting a proper load on the motor. It's rated at 1.7 and we're getting 1.8, so I would not want to increase the pitch on this because it's already where it should be. And it's in such perfect balance. It's really incredible that you don't feel it vibrate at all. Even the patents weren't in that good of a balance always. And the spin down time is better than it was. So that's good. Uh, as far as the tear down is concerned, it gets an 8 pause. It's very easy to clean and, and the oil ports make it very easy to service. And the motor is really nice inside. So I'm, I'm just as pleased with this as I was before, even a little bit more.